Welcome to Table from One. I'm the narrator, and in today's video, I'll be introducing you to the Mysticana Foundation deck. Then I'm going to do a solo playthrough of one of the original core games that comes with it called Nine Perils. Let's get rolling. So in this uh, video, I want to take a look at the Mysticana Foundation deck here, and then I want to play uh, probably a couple games of uh, Nine Perils. So let's take a look at what this Mysticana deck is. Uh, so it's a foundation deck, which means that it's just a deck of cards that you're meant to be able to play a lot of games with. Uh, so typical of Button Shy Games, and I should say this was provided me uh, by Button Shy Games. Um, so typical this uh of, of a button shy deck there are 18 cards uh, and you can see on the back here this uh this symbol they have three suits water fire and i'm gonna say earth uh i hope it's not plant no i'm right it's earth sometimes i'm right uh, and they have these arrows on it uh, because these suits have a rock paper scissors um mechanism to it so water is better than fire fire is better than earth earth is better than water um, and so the three suits here that are mixed up they have uh numbers on them from two to six and then each of these numbers are uh, are labeled so six is astra astra that'll be the same across suits three is spirit five is guardian four is dominion um so whatever i haven't i haven't really run into any thing where that's mattered too much yet uh the the odds are animals i've noticed or maybe not animals are, are i guess entities <laughs> and the the uh the evens are looks kind of like places um and then there's also the avatars uh which kind of function like an ace and every game that you can play with the mysticana deck uh the the avatars will function a little bit differently, so the rules are are different from game to game. So when you get this uh, this base foundation deck of eighteen cards, of three suits, um, it comes with this main rule book, which just kind of explains how the suits work. Um, and then on the back, there is a solo game called Nine Perils, and that's what I'll be playing today. I think I'll play it twice. Uh, and then it comes with a second booklet with two more games. Uh, Sorcerer's Showdown is a two-player game, and the path ahead is two to four players. So I have not played these yet. Uh, I've, I've focused on the solo, as you might imagine. But uh, I like this idea because, you know, I like the idea that I've got this deck of cards and then, you know, more games can, uh, can always be released for it. And in fact, next week I'll put out a, another video that features another solo game you can play with uh, with the Mysticana Foundation deck uh, as long as you have uh, the expansion uh, for that solo game that comes with uh, six more cards. So I think there'll be expansions that introduce other cards and, and you can you know play with new mechanisms that way. So you can see one of those next week. Um, so make sure you subscribe if you'd like to see that. But right now I'm gonna show you Nine Perils. So I'm gonna start by shuffling up these cards. And I think I mentioned I, I intend to play it twice. I'll play it on easy mode and then hard mode. But this is the solo game that comes just with the uh, the rules come with the foundation deck. You don't need any other uh, cards to play it. And so I'll play it and walk you through at the same time. So, all right, we're going to lay out nine cards, as you might imagine, um, in a game called Nine Perils. I think that was nine. Yes, and now we're gonna flip over this middle card. All right, so these are the nine perils and we are trying to avoid the perils. Um, so with the nine cards that are left, we've got a, a deck and we'll place that, I guess, up here. And we're going to play one card beneath each of these cards. And what we're doing is we're trying to um, beat in, in individual matchups, we want our card to beat the card above it um, by rank, which is, you know, the number. And so if we play, uh, you know, a five of fire here, the five is greater than the four, we uh, we would win that. 
Now, if I were to play, say, a four of water, when the elements do not match, whichever element uh, would win in this sort of rock, paper, scissors matchup gets plus one to its rank. So if I played a four of water here, uh, we would treat it like a five and it would win. Uh, likewise, if I played a four of earth here, the fire would get a plus one, so it would be like a five against a four, and we would lose that matchup. Now, if we were to play, say, uh, say a three of water, it would get a plus one, and it would be like a four against a four, and they tie. So in the event of a tie, um, you ignore the next pair, and then the following pair, you look at the result of that matchup, and if you win, then you consider the pre, you know, the one where you tied and the one in between them, you consider them both to be wins. And that does wrap around from the right to the left. So uh, in order to win the game, you need to eliminate all the perils. So that doesn't necessarily mean you need to beat each pair. So if, again, if this was a tie, we're gonna look at two cards ahead. And if we win that matchup, then we uh, automatically win the tied one and the one between. So if we have a losing matchup, we can play it here if we tie here and it'll be considered a win. So uh, it's kind of an interesting dynamic. And so the uh, difficulty modes on this are just the amount of cards you start with. One would be the most expert and three would be beginner. And you could, you know, of course, play in the middle and take two. So for this first game, I'll take three cards from this deck. So we have in our hand, uh, two of earth, five of water, and three of water. And maybe, uh, maybe I need to push all these up just a little bit. So there's room to see what's in our hand. Okay, so each round uh, has three steps, and if there's a step you can't complete, you just skip it. But the steps in order are first flip over any of these face down perils. And so let's flip over this one. Then you draw one card, and then you play one card. So let's uh, talk about some of the options here just to reinforce some of the dynamics. So let's say I took this five of earth and paired it with this four of fire. Fire beats earth, so the four is gonna be treated like plus one. So it's like a five and a five, so those would tie. If I play this five of water against this five of fire, uh, the water beats fire, so it gets a plus one. So that would be like a win. It'd be like a six against a five. Uh, likewise, if I pair this three of water with this four of fire, water beats fire, so it gets a plus one. So this would turn this uh, three and four into a tie, and I think I'm going to do that. So by making that a tie, whatever this pair is doesn't matter, and this pair will determine the outcome of both of these. So the next round, I'm going to flip over another card, and I guess we'll flip over this one and draw one card. And now we can play something. And now I've just drawn an avatar of water. And so the avatars in Nine Perils are pretty interesting. Uh, when there's an avatar involved in the matchup, then you ignore the ranks completely. You ignore the numbers and you just strictly look at, uh, again, this rock, paper, scissors element. So this would immediately win against any fire, lose against any earth, and tie with any water. So what I think I'm going to do is pair... Um, I want to pair this five of water with this four of earth. So earth beats water. So that's going to be a five and a five. So that's another tie. So this tie is going to be resolved by this one. And this one will be resolved by this one. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting. So let's, uh, let's reveal the next card. All right, we've got a three of earth and then draw a card. And a six of fire, okay. So we've got some options here, but I think I'm gonna take this five of earth and pair it here. So we're gonna, they're both earth, so there's no uh, changes to rank. So it'll just be five to three. We'll win, which will automatically win us these two and those two. So I can put anything here, it doesn't matter. Uh, and so I've only got to really worry about these four right now. So let's flip over another card and maybe we'll make it this first one, okay six of earth and then draw a card six of water and i've got the six of fire here let's pair those two together so that'll be treated as seven to six and i'll win that matchup now we'll i guess flip this one over the avatar of fire we draw a card four of water and yeah i'll put this water here because there's an avatar involved we're going to ignore the ranks and just water beats fire so we're going to win that matchup too so now let's reveal this one Avatar of Earth, draw another peril. Two of water. All right, so this is dangerous. Any of these water cards placed here will lose. Um, so I either need to tie here, um, or I can place this Earth card here, and because there's an avatar involved, it's just Earth against Earth, and they'll tie, and they'll be resolved by this one, but I don't know what that one is yet. 
So I think until I find out, I'm going to delay um, and play. I'll put this, let's see, the six of fires out, five, four. Okay, so I'm going to put this avatar of water here against fire and automatically win that matchup. So now we continue to go, even though the deck is empty, we reveal the next card and then we have no card to take and now we still play another card. And at this point, we have perfect information. This is a two of fire, uh, which can be beaten by a two of water. So we'll place the six here. Now we reveal, and we'll tie here, and then we'll place this last card here. And now from left to right, we start resolving them. So uh, six and six, this is fire against earth. So fire gets plus one, so we win. So to represent that win, we just flip this card, this peril over. The next one, there's an avatar involved, so it's just fire and water, and water wins. And now we go to this third matchup. There's an avatar involved, so water beats fire. That's a win. We go to this one, another avatar involved, earth and earth tie. So to resolve this, we just skip this and look at this one. And now it's uh, three of fire, six of water, and this one gets a plus one boost, so it's really like seven to three. So we win, and that means this is considered a win and this is considered a win. So now we'll continue resolving. This is four and five, um, but the earth gets a boost, so it's really like five to five, so this is a tie. So we're going to ignore this one and now resolve this one, um, and this is three to five, and they're the same, um, same suit, so it's just straight up three to five. So we win that and then treat the previous two as if we won them. And now because these are all face down, we've resolved everything and we have averted all nine perils. So we've won the game on easy. So now give me just a minute. I am going to shuffle up these cards a little bit and then uh, play the same game again, but I'm gonna play it on hard difficulty. So only taking one card at the beginning instead of three. So we'll have a lot fewer options. So just stick around for a second. All right, and real quick before I play that second game, I, I wanted to point this out too. So this uh, Mysticana Foundation deck is uh, designed by Dustin Dobson and Jamie Thule. And I just want to point that out because I do have another game co-designed by Jamie Thule. This one's by Jamie Thule and Mike Berg. This is called In Dreams. Um, I've not featured it on this channel before, um, but it's got all this surrealist artwork and it's a it's a storytelling game. So um, you're, you're kind of writing, but it's really interesting. And I just thought I would... Uh, you know, I just recognize the designer's name, so I had this on my shelf, and I thought I would show it real quick. Um, so I don't intend to have this on the channel because it's really about sitting and writing, but it's it's kind of neat. So it's just another Jamie Thule uh, co-design game in my collection, so that's kind of neat. But anyway, uh, let's play this second game of Nine Perils now. So uh, I'm going to put the nine cards out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can make them look pretty after they're out because I never, never seem to be able to deal them out uh, where the center is actually in front of me. I'm just bad at dealing cards. There we go. Okay, so we start off by flipping the middle card, six of water, and now I'm going to start with only one card in hand, five of water. Okay, um, so I'm not going to beat that, so let's see if I can maybe tie this one so that the six of water doesn't matter. So I flip, I draw, and now I need to play. I might want to save this higher one. Let's put, um, hmm, and maybe if I can, if I can draw this one, then this one won't matter. Uh, which is a little bit of a gambit, but you can you can play cards um, below face down perils. There's there's no reason you can't do that. So uh, it seems early for that. <laughs> let's let's do this first. We'll play this the four against that two. This will be treated as a three, so that'll still be a win. Now let's reveal this one. Five of Earth that I draw. Avatar of Water. Okay. So if I play either of these here, I will lose. Uh, this here will lose, this here will tie. And it frightens me to tie right now because I would be dependent on beating this five in order to win. Right, so I think I'm gonna take a gamble and I'm gonna, hmm. Well, shoot. I'm gonna play the, 
the, all right, I'm going to play the avatar there. So this is a tie. So this doesn't matter. This I need to beat or tie, kick it down the road again to this one. So now let's see what that looks like. All right, three of fire and I draw one, three of water, a lot of water. We'll go ahead and place this here to get a solid win. Um, let's see what this one looks like, I guess. Avatar of fire. Avatar of earth. Okay. So we've tied this matchup. We're winning this one. Let's tie this one. So this will be a tie and a tie and a win. So now this whole half is resolved. So I have these two spaces to play with to, to dump a card if I need to. And I can always play this here to win. But even a, a, you know, even a two of water would win here. Any water would win. So I might want to hold on to that. But all the avatars are out now, I see. So let's flip this one over. Four of water. Because there's always the option to tie on this one and win here. And make this card irrelevant too. So I've got a three of earth. And yeah, three's a pretty low rank. I'd rather hold on to the five. So I can play it here, and it'll tie with this because uh, this will get a plus one, so it'll both be fours. So these will be dependent on this, which will be dependent on this, which will be dependent on this, which I already have one. Um, so now I've really only got these two left to worry about. So maybe we'll flip this one over next. Ooh, six of fire, okay. And a four of fire. And that's a pretty good draw. Let's play this fire against this avatar. And I think at this point I've already won because uh, I've got this chain of ties going all the way down. Um, but we'll go ahead and continue with the game until we get to the end. So we flip, we draw, and we can, um, you know, we can make this a tie, but it doesn't really matter. We flip, we draw, and... Uh, that would be a win, this would be a loss, but that's okay. So now we resolve from left to right. So Avatar uh, is here, so it's just fire against fire is a tie. So we look here now, uh, four of water and a three of earth. The earth gets plus one, so it's the four and a four, so that's a tie. So now we skip and look here. It's Avatar of water against other water, so that's a tie. So we skip two, we go here, Avatar of earth against earth, that's a tie, skip two. Uh, three of fire and three of water. Uh, the, the water gets a plus one, so it's treated like a four. So we win this, and that resolves that tie, which then resolves this tie, which resolves that tie, and that tie. So as you can see, I didn't necessarily win every matchup, but I was able to uh, win. I was able to win the game and avoid all of the nine perils. So Nine Perils by itself is a cool game. Um, you know, it's I really like how quick it is, um, and it's simple. I, I, I can play it really fast in like under five minutes, and I feel like I made that look a little bit easy, but it's it's uh, it's not always that way. It just depends on the cards, and I, I kind of like the situations where sometimes you have to you have to make a guess and, and play a card uh, beneath an unrevealed peril and and hope that you're you know you do the you do the math work on what cards are remaining and uh, and you figure out the the risk or the chances that uh, uh, you're going to win whatever matchup you get. And I don't know. I think it's, I think it's good. But I also like the uh, the fundamental promise of a foundation deck. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing what other uh, games are released for this. Like I said, next week I will show you Cave of Gins, which is another solo game uh, using this deck. But I, I bet there's going to be a bunch of fan-made games um, using the Mysticana Foundation deck as well. And I'm pretty excited to see what everybody comes up with. So that's a general overview of the Mysticana Foundation deck. Don't forget, it comes with a, a two-player game and a two-to-four-player game as well by default. But uh, this being table for one, I'm showing you the solo game. And if you'd like to see more button shy content on this channel, make sure uh, to let me know by liking and sharing and uh, leaving some comments. And then of course, if you, if you want to see it later, make sure you subscribe so you get the notifications. But that's what I've got this week on table for one. I had a great time. I hope you did too. And I'll see you in the next video.